Today, Gary Gensler warns investors about crypto fraud, exchange CoinList settles with OFAC over Russian sanctions violations, and Valkyrie's chief investment officer discusses the latest in the asset manager Spot Bitcoin ETF application. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Talia Kaplan. Digital currency still riding high after the Fed decided to keep interest rates steady to close out 2023 and suggested they might actually cut rates in 2024. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded above $42,600, Ether inched closer to $2,300, and Uniswap rose to $631. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Coinbase is doubling down on its international expansion. The crypto exchange announced it's launching spot crypto markets for eligible institutions starting today, December 14th, with Bitcoin USDC and Ether USDC trading pairs. Now, before this announcement, Coinbase only offered perpetual futures contract trading for professionals in certain regions. This latest update still doesn't include retail investors. That will come later. Now, the expansion is part of Coinbase's push to grow outside the U.S., as regulation for crypto remains uncertain here. Speaking of regulation, Gary Gensler joined CNBC's Money Movers this morning and was asked for his thoughts on overseeing the crypto industry. The SEC chair said he thinks the industry's tendency to flout regulations that are in place goes far beyond a few bad actors. There's a lot of non-compliance, non-compliance with the securities laws that are there to help give you the disclosure so you can make the investment decision, but also to protect you against fraud and manipulation. And there's been far too much fraud and, and bad actors in the crypto field. There's a lot of non-compliance, not only with the securities laws, but other laws around anti-money laundering and protecting the public. This is really the Wild West, and it's around the globe. I would, I would say again, this is a small part of our U.S. capital markets, but it can undermine confidence when so many people have been hurt, and all they can do is then stand in line at a bankruptcy court. And, and it's not just one actor, and it's not just, oh, it's just a few bad actors over here. This is something that pervades a lot of this uh, field globally. And it's hard for the good faith actors even to compete because there's so many challenges elsewhere. Now, Gensler was also asked about the latest on the spot Bitcoin ETF applications that are before the agency, but he didn't say much other than the regulator was still considering them. Last, California-based crypto exchange CoinList just settled with the U.S. Treasury over transactions tied to sanctions violations. OFAC, the Office of Foreign Assets Control, announced that CoinList will pay $1.2 million after processing nearly 1,000 transactions on behalf of Crimean residents who are subject to Russian sanctions between April of 2020 and May of 2022. OFAC said CoinList had KYC measures, but that screening process failed to bar users who said they were from one country, but actually provided an address in Crimea. All right, for our main story this morning, asset manager Valkyrie filed another amendment to its spot Bitcoin ETF application, this time to clarify the redemption process for investors. Just hours before that filing, I sat down with Valkyrie co-founder and chief investment officer Stephen McClurg to discuss the SEC's much-anticipated decision on a potential swap Bitcoin ETF here in the U.S. I want to focus on the race for the first spot Bitcoin ETF here in the U.S. Valkyrie, your asset management firm, has an application pending for a spot Bitcoin ETF here in the U.S. with the SEC, among other asset managers, including BlackRock, Fidelity, and Wisdom Tree. And now industry experts expect that we could see the U.S. launch its first spot Bitcoin ETF early next year. Do you think that's a realistic timeline? And are you feeling optimistic that your application and others will, in fact, get approved? I actually do believe that we're going to see a approval early next year as well, uh, sometime between January and March. Uh, I do have a high level of confidence that ours will be approved uh, along with several others. As a matter of fact, I think most people will be approved all at once. And we're moving very quick to uh, make sure that we're ready to go um, first week of January. What steps are you taking to make sure you are in fact ready to go? Well, the, the typical steps that you that you go through to launch an ETF, uh, you set up a fund admin, you set up a custodian, 
you set up all your market makers, uh, you know, a lot of boring things uh, that, that goes into, we have this entire list, entire punch list of all the things you have to do, including depositing a C, getting a first audit. So, uh, so those are all the, the items that we're going through the list of uh, as we speak, uh, trying to be ready before the end of the year. So do you really think it's realistic that it will in fact happen? I mean, after all, the industry has been trying for about a decade, and we all know that SEC Chair Gary Gensler has been a vocal critic of crypto, although it's important to note that he recently said he will listen to his staff's input on a potential spot Bitcoin ETF. And of course, we also recently saw that court win for Grayscale when a federal court sided with Grayscale over the SEC and its attempt to convert its Bitcoin trust into an ETF. So how does all of that play into the equation? Yeah, I actually believe that uh, Gary Gensler is someone who is a big proponent of Bitcoin and a big proponent of this uh, ETF launching. Uh, he's uh, acted very favorable uh, towards the crypto industry. I know, I know a lot of people don't feel like he has, but uh, the very first Bitcoin futures ETF actually launched under his watch. Uh, he said he laid out exactly what he thought issuers needed to do to get there. And it played out exactly like he said he did. You know, uh, he, he came forward and said, uh, in a 40 act fund, I could see Bitcoin futures uh, being launched. And about 90 days later or less, um, we had Bitcoin futures in the market. Uh, we have ETH futures in the market under his watch. And right now we're in a moment of time where uh, the staff is working very hard uh, to get a Bitcoin spot ETF into the market. So uh, I, I absolutely believe that he's well educated along with other people on the staff about Bitcoin, about how it works and how a Bitcoin ETF is going to work. Expanding on that, memos released late last month revealed that the SEC met with asset managers BlackRock and Grayscale ahead of that much anticipated decision over a potential spot Bitcoin ETF. So I'm wondering, what does that signal to you? And did you have any meetings with the SEC recently on the topic? Yeah, I mean, we, we speak with uh, the staff all, all the time. Uh, and About as, a spot as, Bitcoin ETF? Sometimes, <laughs> as recently? well as others. <laughs> In recent weeks? Well, you know, I'm not going to really comment on our, our, our direct conversations with the staff. But, but what I will say is this. Uh, what the staff is trying to do right now is to make sure that markets function effectively and that all disclosures are in the filings before they launch. And, and those are two very important functions in the SEC. And I, I will say that I believe they're moving very quickly. They're being very thorough. Um, there's a lot of speculation on when this will launch. Uh, my answer is going to be sometime after January 2nd and when they are ready. And uh, but I but I think that we'll get there soon. And it certainly will be very interesting <laughs> to see what transpires on that front. But I'm wondering, what do you think will happen to crypto if these spot Bitcoin ETFs do, in fact, get approved here in the U.S.? I heard you say that you think it will be massive for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, there's there's two buckets of cryptocurrencies really in the U.S. And that's one's that the SEC has looked at as being, you know, and decided they're not securities like Bitcoin. There's also a lot of other cryptocurrencies that are still questionable in, in their minds. So I don't think it's necessarily a big deal for all of crypto, but it's certainly a big deal for Bitcoin. And um, as far as how big it could be for Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin is a very cyclical in industry. Uh, it's It runs in four-year cycles based on uh, mining halvings. And we're now at the point of the cycle where we're at the typical bottom of the cycle moving up. So not only do not only are we in a in a in an upward bull market cycle, we are also getting ready to have a Bitcoin spot ETF. So those two things together are is, is really going to move markets in a favorable way. I'm wondering what prompted you to file an application for a spot Bitcoin ETF specifically right now. I believe this is your second attempt. BlackRock filed its application for a spot Bitcoin ETF, and then many other asset managers followed mm -hmm. suit. So I'm wondering, did that influence your decision at all, especially because BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager after mm -hmm. all? So I'm wondering if that contributed to your filing. Yeah, it actually didn't. So uh, we actually filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF back in January of 2020, uh, sorry, 2021. That's right. And um, so we've been working on it ever since then. 
Um, we have, of course, filed uh, amendments to um, you know some of our 19 before filings, uh, given new information and, and things like the surveillance agreement that, that came out uh, with NASDAQ. Uh, but we've been working on this um, really now almost three, is it almost three years? So, uh, so, so, so BlackRock really didn't influence us a whole lot. We, um, you know, we, we, we kind of came in and started that whole first wave of filings back in 2021, and we just continued to, uh, to work on this in any way we can. What do you think BlackRock's move to file an application for? It's about Bitcoin ETF signals to the industry and about crypto. Does it perhaps show people that there's growing interest and acceptance in Bitcoin from institutional investors? It really does. Um, it, w w what that signals to me is that they're getting demand. You know, I don't think BlackRock is going to do something because they are uncertain about the demand that they're getting. And of course, BlackRock and firms like that that are, that are very large, not only are they catering to a retail or a financial advisor audience, they're catering to pension funds and insurance companies. So when you're getting demand on that side of the institutional market, uh, it, it's really what prompts you to start launching products. So, so we believe that uh, insurance companies, or we know for a fact, insurance companies and pension funds are looking at Bitcoin as an investment. Now, Valkyrie recently moved to convert its Bitcoin futures ETF to include Ether futures as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what prompted that move and how is it going so far? Yeah. So so first of all, um, about the time that we were getting close to an Ether futures ETF approved, uh, we started getting indications that Bitcoin spot was going to move forward. So really, if you have a Bitcoin futures ETF in the market, it probably goes to zero <laughs> as far as as far as interest as soon as spot launches. So on the, on the one hand, we looked at that product and said, well, Bitcoin spot is superior. It's coming soon. Um, you know, why would we why would we keep that around the way it is? But it was easy to convert that to uh, a, a Bitcoin and Ether futures product. So 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 we did that because we believe that that's what the market was demanding uh, out of futures was some kind of combination. Uh, it wasn't demanding Bitcoin futures alone anymore with, with spot coming. And it's actually worked out quite well for us. Uh, we've, we've traded on a lot of volume uh, in, in that combination fund, and it gives people an opportunity to invest in both places at the moment. Now, McClurg also argued that if a spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved, it opens the door for a spot Ether ETF approval as well. You'll be able to check out his full interview over at CNBC.com slash crypto world. OK, that's all for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.